What's up guys? Back with another video. Um, today, I'm pretty much just going to be going over uh, some of the stuff I've been doing on the first gen. Um, I know it's been a while since I've made a longer video like this, but uh, or not a longer video, but you know, something other than a short. So I just want to bring you guys up to speed. Um, I've been doing a lot time crunches for shows and advertising and stuff so i haven't been getting videos in but uh yeah let's uh take a look at the truck and see what i've been doing all right so you guys can see the bed is gone that's the probably the biggest change um i sold the aluminum service bed uh and i'm looking for a factory bed we went up to New York Friday. Uh, today's Monday, fr so last Friday we went up to uh, New York and drove this thing two hours. Uh, did great, but uh, we were uh, looking at a bed, eight foot bed, and the guy said it was clean. It wasn't horrible, but it was definitely not clean. <laughs> And it was pretty dented up, so uh, he wanted a grand. I originally I was like, once I saw it, I talked him down to eight fifty, and then I was like, you know what? No, I can find something better. Um, so I'm looking again for a factory bed. I'm not really sure now. I have another idea that I will, you know. Uh, kind of explain to you guys here in a minute but uh so took that service bed off um there was someone had welded a massive plate steel plate here and along here and then same thing on the other side you can actually see where I cut it off um but they welded it here on three sides and a bunch of shit got in here and really thinned this frame out it's solid still it's not rotted but it is thin so i'm thinking i'm gonna plate that probably uh smash this up a little bit so it's not as dipped and then plate it uh so that because I, I mean it's probably fine but just so that it's not a weak point um, and, uh, so bed came off, uh, gooseneck came off cause I don't have a gooseneck trailer. Um, we have it up on jack stands right now in the rear doing some brake work. You can see here we got all new brake lines. Um, in a couple weeks we're going to be sandblasting. The whole frame, the axle, the leaf springs. Uh, we're gonna, I'm gonna drop the tank for the like the third time, and uh, I gotta build another fill neck because this one doesn't work with the bed off. Um, but uh, yeah, so we're gonna drop the tank, uh, sandblast everything, the drive shaft, the uh, axle, the springs the frame, the hitch, and we're gonna probably do a chassis saver on it. Uh, if you guys know, I was thinking, so I was thinking chassis saver, and my buddy said uh, fluid film. I don't know which one would be better. I'm thinking just chassis saver, uh, but it depends on if I'm gonna put a bed on it or not, because chassis saver is uh, photosensitive or light sensitive or whatever. Um, so get a sandblast paint, build a new fuel neck. Uh, and then I'm thinking I've got factory, uh, tail lights coming. So I'm going to mount, these are just temporary. Uh, I'm going to mount them up somehow, make them look nice, I hope. Remount the plate. Um, and then 
I'm thinking about getting some chrome fender wells to go over the wheels and then I'm buying a trailer so I might just do the fender wells new fuel neck get the frame all nice and clean and just run it like that because I really only need it for mobile fab um, and I think it would be kind of cool with those fender flares or fender wells or whatever you want to call them uh, and then if I do eventually find a, a factory bed I can always get it and put it on um, if I find a nice one for a good price uh, but yeah, so that's possibly the plan. Not really sure. Uh, so yeah, you can see new brake line here, new brake line all the way across and then all the way up to the engine bay. Uh, we got the bags. I want to tee these in together. Um, these two, cause you have to fill them individually. I want to tee them in together. Uh, we recently dropped the tank, cleaned the whole fuel sending unit. Um, that I need to replace. I'm going to get the fleece performance upgraded one. Because uh, this one is not accurate 100% of the time. It'll, uh, it'll be close, but sometimes it'll read quarter when you're at half. And it'll be saying quarter, and then you look down, like, a ways, ways later, ways down the road, and it'll be back up to half, and it's just not ideal. Plus, the fleece one is a nice upgrade. It seems to pull a bit more fuel and not have a quarter tank uh, issue, anything like that, pulling air. Um, but, uh, yeah, let's move up front more. So... These are one thing I really like that I've done is uh, my father actually, he does some woodworking and these aren't perfect, but they're pretty good. Uh, he made these, just modeled them off of the factory ones. You can see I've already gotten them dirty, but I think those look really nice. Really happy with them. Uh, got a phone mount in here finally. Um, and I've got my uh, coolant temp over here, so that's not blocking anything really important. Uh, I got my tack light working. Um, we were driving home from New York, uh, and it was dark out, and I could not see what RPMs I was at. So uh, shifting was kind of interesting. Um, and uh, I uh, hooked up my electric fans to the manual switch finally uh, i probably won't ever really use it but i've got the wire for it i figured i'd put it in uh we have coming a headlight relay set or um headlight relay upgrade coming from lmc truck uh as well as new headlights this one the low beam doesn't work um and they just suck in general so uh yeah um we just did new master and a new brake booster because my old brake booster was uh would not hold vacuum um new line here for some reason, this master cylinder, uh, this line didn't line up. This one was a bastard to get in, but I eventually got it. This one was way off, so I remade it. Um, we've been having issues getting the brakes to work now. Uh, just have a really, really soft pedal that goes right to the floor. Um, but uh, I think I may have figured it out. I adjusted the... Uh, brake booster rod a bit and I think that may have helped so we're gonna once I get a friend up here to help me I'm gonna bleed the brakes 
again and see if they're good now. We adjusted the rear drums uh, by bringing them to uh, till they were dragging and then backing them off a little bit. Uh, not sure if that helped. They might have been fine already, but uh, yeah, so we're hoping that we got this going correctly now that the brakes will work because I replaced this stuff to fix my brakes and then they were worse than they were. So I tested the master. I took these lines off. I plugged them with the plugs that came with it to bench bleed it. I did bench bleed it. But once it was on the truck, I plugged both of them, pressed on the brake, and it dropped a ways, but then it was rock hard. Um, that could be another thing with that rod was too short. Um, I checked the vacuum from my vacuum pump. Perfect 27 uh, inches of mercury. Uh, checked the valve, the or the uh, whatever it's called, the one-way valve here. Um, check the brake booster. Everything's good. Holding vacuum. Uh, so I'm, I don't have any leaks in my lines that I can see. Seems to all be good. Um, if this, if adjusting that, uh, rod doesn't help, I'm probably going to get a Willwood, um, proportioning valve instead of this guy uh, manual proportioning valve and see if that helps um, and then we should be hopefully hopefully just adjusting that rod will fix the issue if not proportioning valve if not that then I guess I'm gonna go into the rear brakes and the drums and which sucks because you gotta Obviously, you have to pull the, the wheel, but then you have to pull the axle as well. The whole axle has to come out to pull the drum off. Um, which I think is kind of a horrible design. One thing, I love Dodge, but that was stupid. Um, this oil cap here, I got from... I'm not going to say who, because I forget. Um, but... I think it was pure diesel performance. Um, I did the billet tappet cover and these CCV hoses, you'd shut the truck off. Well, I guess it would probably do it when it was running too, but it would just, there was a ton of oil coming out of it. Um, so I threw that on there with the breather and it helped tremendously. Like, I don't even think, yeah, see, way less oil. It used to leave like a legit puddle. Now, I don't even know if those spots are from that. But uh, yeah, I had to get that fixed cause I was leaking like a quart a week. Uh, so. Um, that helped, plus it looks cool. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I, well, I, I don't know. Uh, I did this, uh, low car, uh, throttle cable, stainless steel throttle cable, uh, which is really cool, except... Um, I mean, I, I had to modify the pedal a bit to make it fit, uh, but now it works good. Um, and I had to trim quite a bit off of here and actually trim this sleeve too. Uh, the sleeve that it goes through, I think is just PTFE braided line, like 4AN. Um, so I trimmed that cause originally it was coming way down here and then up. So I cut it so it pretty much just goes straight back. Um, and I 
the thing I didn't like about that is when I put that on, it was like the pedal was like nothing. I like to feel some resistance on it because it, I don't know, it makes me feel like there, you can feel the load a little bit better as you accelerate the load on the engine rather than just it being loosey goosey. So I got a big heavy spring and put on there compared to the way it's way heavier compared to the factory spring but i deleted all of this all of the bracketry with this metal by charlie mount and that has another spring further back so it uh loosened up quite a bit getting rid of that but i like having so much access in here um we just did fuel heater delete uh cut out the wiring for that plug cut out the wiring for the automatic transmission coolant temperature plug uh because obviously don't have an automatic anymore uh and we also got rid of this plug which is a grid heater air temp i believe something like that um, something for the grid heaters. Yeah, I believe it was air temp that, uh, tells the grid heaters to come on, but we don't have grid heaters anymore. So, uh, coming up next, we're going to be definitely doing fusible link delete. And I'm gonna, I watched Oven's Garage video, Oven's Garage's video. Uh, we're gonna kind of go off that. Uh, but change it up a little bit and I want to put like a relay block I think um, instead of having multiple relays I'm not sure if I can do that but uh, I do know that I'm gonna have constant and switched power on a block uh, on a fuse block so that's coming up soon uh, headlights are coming up, uh, headlight relays, what else do we got here, oh, I, uh, heat wrapped these, uh, my oil feed, as well as my oil return, uh, jeez, I, uh, relocated this oil dipstick when I deleted the, all the brackets down there. And, uh, yeah, I'm thinking I might redo the front brake lines as well, because I only did from here, back, and across the axle. Um, yeah, and then pretty soon we're going to do injectors. Think of 5 by 14 Um... Cleaned all this wiring back here up. Other than just deleting those plugs, I cleaned this up a lot. Cut all the unnecessary ones out of the plugs because we had all the wiring coming from the automatic transmission that is now gone. Uh, the only thing going down towards the transmission that we have now is, uh, well, other than this, but over, right over there, Going down to the transmission, we just have reverse reverse lights, uh, transfer case uh, for so it knows when it's in four wheel drive and the light on the dash comes on, as well as speed sensor, and I believe that is everything. When I redid the brake lines back here, you guys probably already saw, but I deleted that rear wheel anti-lock or R wall got rid of that which got rid of a plug that goes into that got rid of wires that go down to here um because I don't need that shit I just I want it to be clean I'm getting rid of all the wiring I don't need the R wall I heard has caused problems I'm gonna get that manual proportioning valve so I won't have to worry about locking up the rears um so I'm told Maybe I'm wrong, who knows? We'll find out when I slide through a 
a stoplight or something i don't know but uh yeah it's uh it's coming along really well it's definitely becoming a very cool truck i think um and it's probably a never-ending project i'm probably just gonna keep making shit better uh the wiring already in this whole thing is a hell of a lot better i want to fix this situation for the starter it's just kind of junky i don't want it I don't want anything on the battery that doesn't have to be. Um, I want to reroute this so that it's just going. Because it goes down to the, there on the block. And it's like, why does it have to go all the way around? So I'm just going to make it go straight. And then... Uh, going to have a fuse block over here. There'll just be a wire to there. And then to a solenoid for constant uh or, or for switched power uh and then everything nicely done there i have a ton of stuff it actually looks pretty good under here but uh there is a bunch of stuff behind this um for like gauges and actually i think it is all just gauges but I'm going to run all that out to the switched power, make it nice so that, you know, there's not a bird's nest under the dash um, and everything is safe. But uh, yeah, I'm getting uh, getting close to doing this pipe and titanium as well as the intake horn like that side is um and we'll have that intake horn and the pipe uh for sale on the website i'll link the website down below if you guys uh need any products for your first gen we've got the braided power steering lines got the braided heater hose lines uh we have let me know if you guys think i should sell a kit for this low car cable um i would kind of have to get metal by charlie to partner with me on that or something um but uh yeah i uh I'll probably, I could make those CCV lines. Could throw those on the website if you want them. They just go down around the frame and out like that. Um, I have a factory location passenger side intercooler pipe as well as the intake for sale on my website. Um, these intakes are awesome. If you guys get one, this is going to be a little further under the fender. Uh, this will fit this turbo setup as well as a factory turbo setup. So you don't got to worry about, uh, it not fitting. It'll fit this configuration or a factory configuration. This turbo is just a little higher up. Um, it's the same forward back uh and side to side it's about the same but uh yeah i'm probably gonna put these braided uh turbo feeds on there uh braided turbo drain because everyone has universal ones and they kind of suck um i do have to find a better uh, drain flange before I put that up, but, uh, yeah, guys, let me, uh, let me know what you think, uh, definitely let me know what you think about doing just the chrome fender, fender wells, I think that would look pretty cool, but I'm not entirely sure, so, we'll, uh, I'll try to 
start making more videos again. Uh, keep you guys up to date. Uh, hopefully, I, I got to get my camera guy back so that we can do some more and get good quality content for you. But, uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the update. And we will see you in the next one.